Ara, uh, the ED of Heritage Food, who joins us um, to discuss what's going on in the business. Hi, Brahmani. Thanks so much uh, for joining in uh, this morning. Uh, you know, first things first, uh, Heritage Foods has primarily been known for their uh, presence in South India. And there were reports indicating you're looking to reach out to the north as well as to the west. Uh, what's your current geographic breakup? And uh, if you could tell us, what's it going to look like maybe in the next couple of years? Sure. So our core markets, uh, like you said, are uh, primarily in South India. So we're across the states of uh, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Orissa. Uh, we have some presence in Maharashtra as well, and we recently started our operations in Delhi and CR region. Uh, we are actually looking at expanding our operations through the recent acquisition of uh, Reliance's uh, dairy uh, business, which is still in progress. So that will not only help us uh, increase our growth in uh, existing markets, but also it will give us uh, a foothold in newer markets in the north, such as Punjab, Rajasthan, Haryana, Uttarakhand, and uh, a little bit in Madhya Pradesh as well. So as a company, we definitely want to be a pan-India player in the dairy industry, and uh, we want to ride on the value-added product growth, and we, we believe there is an opportunity across India. How soon will the revenues from Reliance Retail kick in and what would they be on an annual basis? So I'm really happy to announce that we recently uh, received approval from the Competition Committee, uh, Commission of India, which means that uh, very soon we'll be integrating the business into us. Um, so we w I can give you more details uh, once uh, the closing happens, uh, mm -hmm. but we have received approvals. All right. Uh, and uh, in terms of revenues, uh, you can't give us a number over there. I believe that they use in FI 16, they did around 560 crores or thereabouts. Uh, is there scope uh, you know, to up those revenues uh, that Reliance Retail was working with? Uh, and in terms of margins, is it better than what you're doing? And I think uh, then for nine months, you've done around five and a half percent. Is it going to be margin accretive or margin dilutive? So currently, the, uh, uh, the scale of procurement of Reliance's dairy business is mm -hmm. about uh, a little more than 2 lakh liters per day. And that will add about 20% to our existing business in terms of procurement itself. OK. Um, you spoke about expanding into the north. Is Reliance Retail going to be the only avenue for you to you know, get your expansion on track in other markets like Punjab, Uttarakhand, Haryana, Rajasthan, etc.? Or do you have any other organic ways as well? We will continue to grow organically through our brand of heritage. Uh, through Reliance, uh, not only do we get a very good and stable procurement uh, infrastructure, but we are able to acquire two um, very good established brands under the names of Dairy Life and Dairy Pure. So it will be both organic as well as uh, this inorganic growth that we will be seeing in uh, North Indian markets. And uh, we are um, you know, continuing to um, a bank upon the, the good procurement practices that we have as a company. Uh, so in the last, I'm actually happy to say that we're uh, just entering the 25th year of Heritage Foods. Sure. And uh, we've been able to establish a really strong relationship with our farmers. So what actually brings us milk in, in, a, in a market where it's uh, quite tough is the fact that we have invested a lot into accurately paying the farmer. We have also uh, made sure that our payments are all uh, timely. Uh, with the farmer. We also ensure that uh, we always pick up milk from the farmer, meaning right. that there is assured marketability of their milk. So we work a lot with farmers. We do a lot of other activities as well, uh, input as well as extension. For instance, sure. there right. are social security uh, schemes that we provide to them. Fantastic. We give them subsidized cattle feed, etc. All right. So uh, this is something that we will continue to bank upon. Fantastic. All right, uh, Brahmini, you know, I wanted to ask you actually about uh, the JV uh, that you all had set up with the European company. Uh, what is that for? What kind of products could we come in from there in terms of uh, financials as well, if you could give us some kind of an outlook? Sure. So we're actually looking at bringing in international players with uh, uh, knowledge in specialized products uh, that we could use in the Indian market. Uh, we'll be taking their help for marketing and technology as well. Uh, so we are looking at uh, products that are a logical extension to what we're doing right now, so primarily in the fresh category, things like yogurts, etc. cetera. Uh, next month, we'll be able to provide more information. Uh, right now, I think it's uh, a little difficult to give any information beyond that, but next month, uh, there will be more. Okay, so lots to look forward for uh, in uh, Heritage Foods. Ramani, uh, you sold your retail business to Future Retail, right? Um, 
you know, have you realized the gains? What is the actual realization? What plans with uh, the money that you've received? So um, we are still in the process of completing the transaction. Okay. We are waiting. So we got the approvals from the competition com commission. And um, uh, there are some final approvals that are yet to be received. Mm -hmm. And once we receive that, this will be an all equity transaction where Heritage will own about 3.65% uh, of uh, Future uh, Retail Limited. And you will continue to hold on to that stake or do you have plans to monetize it, sell it, get the cash in for your expansion plans? As of now, the idea is to, um, to uh, hold on the stake uh, sure. as there is a lock-in period as well. All right, uh, Brahmani, very quickly, you know, uh, raw, raw milk prices have moved up. Uh, have you taken a price increase? If you could give us some kind of an idea about uh, the procur procurement prices, the spread that was existing, and how has been the movement in the last couple of months? That'll give us a sense, you know, what can we be looking forward to in FI18? The season is looking a little tough um, mm -hmm. as procurement prices have ris risen by about 15 to 20 percent. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be um, uh, difficult for all daily, uh, dairy players and we're seeing that summer is picking up. Mm -hmm. So this is the time that there is shortage of milk as well in the market in general, naturally. Although we see that uh, since the sale of uh, dairy value added products will increase during these three to four months uh, of summer season, uh, that'll be ab we will be able to set off uh, any increases in procurement prices. Okay. Uh, you know, I was just seeing going through your company presentation, you've highlighted a Vision 2020 document as well, uh, where you want to double the contribution of your value added products. If you could tell us what does it currently stand at? What do you classify as value-added products? What would be the margins you enjoy on them? And therefore, in 2020, what would be the revenue and margin targets for Heritage Foods? Our vision 2022 actually is to be a 6,000 crore company. Um, and uh, we want to bring in a lot of the growth in existing as well as new markets through mm -hmm. organic and inorganic efforts, like we did very recently. We are looking at a huge growth in value-added products. Typically, the margins that we enjoy in value-added products are a double of uh, that we enjoy in uh, milk. So it's about 8% um, EBITDA that we see in milk, whereas in value-added products, it's about 16%. Um, currently, the contribution of value-added products to our overall revenue is about 24%, uh, uh, um, plus we have some consumer uh, products in the fat segment as well. Mm -hmm. So we want to more, more than double this by 2022. So contribution of value-added products such as curd, buttermilk, lassi, long shelf life milk, uh, ice cream and um, you know frozen desserts, that's going to increase to about 40% by 2022. All right, Brahmani, thanks so much for stopping by, giving us all those details. All the best for the coming fiscal as well. Well, so that's the management there of